Hey guys, today we're going to start talking about the skeletal system, as well as all the bones and cartilage that make it up. Now you don't have to think too long about why the skeletal system is actually important to us, and unless you'd uh, prefer to live the lifestyle of a slug, it's going to be very important to helping you move. Now, the skeletal system is not just for protecting and enclosing vital organs, just like with uh, the skull protecting the brain, for example. They also act as levers for which our muscles are going to pull against so we can move. Just quickly to list a few functions that our skeletal system is responsible for, I will start with the most obvious one, which is support. Now using the rib cage as an example, our ribs are allowing our thoracic cavity to remain open so that we can uh, effectively fill our lungs with air when we breathe. Now the next function would be protection. So the bones of our skull fuse together uh, very early in life to protect our brain from harm. And just like the vertebrae prote uh, protects the nerves of the spinal cord. Now as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, our skeleton allows us to move as well. So movement is uh, another very important factor of the skeletal system. Now if our, if our muscles weren't attached to bones, they would not be able to uh, use them to create the leverage that we need to actually uh, move. So for the cartilage and bone that we have in the body, there are a few different types for each one and each one is going to have its own unique function. And we'll talk about the bones first now, the different types there are inside the body. So you're going to come across four different types of bone. And the first one will be a long bone. Now, the long bones are pretty much just all the bones of your limbs, except your patella on the knee, which is just the knee bone. So the long bones, and they're just named because of their, their elongated shape. It has nothing to do with the actual uh, the length of the bone, just so that it's uh, elongated. So, bones of the limbs. Now, the next type of bone that we have in the body are called irregular bones. And now, irregular bones are just called that because they have fairly unusual shapes and usually have a specific function. Now, our vertebrae are a good example of an irregular bone. And uh, the specific function that your vertebrae are going to have is they actually uh, house the spinal cord. And as well, they have attachment points for your rib cage as well. So they're quite a complex shape. Also, your uh, pelvis is a good example of an irregular bone. So just drawing that in here. And then we'll move on to the next type which are the short bones. Now, with the short bones, usually they're all small and fairly uh, cuboidal in shape. So good examples of short bones would be uh, the bones in your hand. So the short bones of the hand, the carpals, and they're cube shaped. And also the tarsals in the foot. Now the last type of bone we have in the body is called a flat bone. Now the best example of a flat bone is our sternum. Now just like the name suggests, a flat bone is just a relatively flat shape. So it's thin and flat. Now this covers the four types of bone that you're going to come across. And we'll move on now to the different types of cartilage that we have in the body as well. So with our cartilage, there are going to be three distinct types. And unlike with the skeleton, the cartilage is classified more based on its compositional properties rather than its shape. Now the first type of cartilage in the body is uh, hyaline. Now hyaline cartilage is the most abundant type of cartilage in the body. We can find it in, uh, in our nose, in our ribs, where the uh, ribs connect onto the sternum, and also in our joints. Now an important function of hyaline cartilage is articulation of the joints and allowing a smooth movement of the body and the bones. So it's a very resilient and flexible. So just writing that here, 
uh, resilient and uh, flexible which is going to allow it to spring back into shape when it's uh, compressed. Uh, the next type of cartilage that we're going to find in the body is called fibrocartilage. Our fibrocartilage is very very strong, it can, uh, can resist a high amount of compression and has really high tensile strength as well. So we're going to uh, find our fibrocartilage anywhere in the body that's under a lot of stress. So we've got it uh, in our knee joints to resist compression, uh, in our vertebrae, in between our vertebrae as well. So its main job is resisting compression. So it's very strong. Alrighty, so the last type of cartilage that we have in our body is the elastic cartilage. Now the elastic cartilage is quite similar to hyaline, but it's very resistant to our repeated bending and it's very flexible. So we're going to find it in our ears and also in our nose. So the elastic cartilage can resist bending, it stretches, and it's similar to hyaline. So in this video so far we've discussed the skeletal system and that it's made out of bones and cartilage. And in the next video we'll actually have a closer look at how the different types of cartilage are made up, the molecules that make them up and how they are structured, so we can see how they're functionally different. Hope this has been helpful to you guys and as always thanks for watching.